Well, Norwich City have started 2024 with a point against the high-flying Southampton. Southampton 18 games unbeaten. That goes on, but Norwich City stops somewhat of a festive rot. Um, I don't think the scoreline tells the full story. It was a game dominated by Southampton. 75% of the ball, 21 shots on goal compared to that of Norwich, who mustered just seven on target. But the points were shared. It was lovely to see Josh Sargent back in the fold, his late goal, meaning that we walk away with a point. Norwich set up very differently to what we saw against West Brom and against Millwall. It was uh, five at the back. Um, Grant Hanley returning to the starting 11 after so long um, out injured. It was a brilliant tweet from NCFC Numbers. The last time that Grant Hanley and Shane Duffy started a game in defence together, uh, David Cameron was UK Prime Minister, Roy Hodgson was the manager of the England team and Leicester City were reigning Premier League champions. They rerun the fun on that today. Uh, Kenny McLean dropping back into centre-back. It meant that Jack Stacey and Sam McCallum slightly higher up the pitch. Nunes and Sarah back in the middle of the park. Signs returning from suspension. Suspension. Johnny Rowe back in the starting eleven, Huang starting up front on their on on his own, and I think sometimes that kind of five at the back or three at the back, however you want to to look at it, can sometimes be slightly misleading, and often that bank of three can play quite high and the wing backs are almost more wingers um it was the opposite of that today Norwich sat incredibly deep, they soaked up pressure um I think Southampton would have been disappointed that they didn't go into the break leading they hit the hit the crossbar Norwich did have the ball in the back of the net it was a lovely finish actually from Sam McCallum uh, Huang was judged to have um, strayed into an offside position I haven't actually seen that back but I did see a tweet from Rob Butler saying it was a perfectly legal goal so nil nil at half time it was fairly uninspiring it wasn't the worst performance from Norwich for a while I thought they defended fairly resolutely they looked actually half half threatening on the counter and and Southampton, I thought, looked vulnerable playing that high line. And if we could have got Huang in behind, then we would have had chances. That didn't happen. The second half kind of ebbed and flowed, and and you could feel it was it was it was an inevitability that Southampton would would go on to score. Norwich couldn't sustain defending that deep. Um, and Adam Armstrong um, got the goal. It was poor defending from Norwich, actually. I think on the most part, they will be happy with the way that they defended. But the goal was really sloppy. We got skinned on the on the left-hand side. A ball played in hand. He got a little bit tangled running towards his goal. And Adam Armstrong was there to, to tap in. And at that point, you probably thought that Southampton might add a second or just see the game out. But credit to Norwich. They brought... Um, or Sergeant came on. And just looked so much better um, than, than what we've had. And and you do just wonder if we could have kept Josh Sargent fit for this season where we would be. Because I think as a team, we look so much better. Um, he only needs a couple of chances and, and one of them will go in, as we saw today. His runs off the shoulder complement Johnny Rose kind of inverting runs beautifully. Um, and it was a superb finish. Peeled off the shoulder of the defender and tucked it home into the bottom corner. And that's probably probably the, the positive to take away from today, not the performance. I think, you know, we got a point and that's great. And I think we would have probably all taken a point against Southampton. So credit to the side for that. I don't think the performance was sustainable. And we've got a really tricky January. I hadn't quite realised how tough this month looks. Now, it's FA Cup football next weekend. We um, host Bristol Rovers. So one would hope that we get through that and a good opportunity th- to, for, for David Wagner to kind of, um, you know, get a few new players in there and, and tinker and, and, and hopefully progress in that. It's a Friday night away trip to Hull, who are going well. We then host West Brom on the 20th and then it's Leeds away on the 27th. So it was vital that we picked up something today because those next three league fixtures look really, really tricky. February gets a little bit easier. Coventry, QPR, Watford, Cardiff, Blackburn. January looks tough and, and I and I would have thought that David Wagner will be looking at that going, oof, you know, if I can survive that, then I'm probably good until the end of the end of the season. Now, it's going to be really interesting to see how Norwich go about January business, not only in terms of transfers, but in terms of, of David Wagner's future. I think everyone will probably realise that performances simply haven't been good enough. Um, Norwich will probably cling on to the fact that they've got 
most of the injuries back now. I thought Grant Hanley was actually really impressive and incredibly hasn't lost any pace considering, you know, the severity of that injury and how long he's been out of action. I thought his return to um, a really competitive fixture was was mightily impressive. And, and Wagner may look at that five at the back as something that he can cling on to against sides that, you know, we're probably expected to lose to. So it wasn't all doom and gloom. I, I thought it was, it was a fairly uninspiring performance. And it's sad that we've got to a point where we need to sit so deep against the Southampton side. And he's deemed that the only way that we're going to get something out of a game. It's also slightly baffling that we've reverted to defending and and relying on our defending to get something out of a game when historically this season it's been, you know, the the one thing that we've been really poor at. Actually scoring goals hasn't been a problem. We've scored plenty of them. It's been keeping them out of our net. So relying on our weak point to try and get something against um, a top side in this division was a unique approach. We got away with it today and, and, and we got a good point. I don't think that kind of performance extrapolates out very nicely across the next few games. I think if we do that against Hull and West Brom and Leeds, we're going to lose a couple of them. Um, and that's not good enough because Norwich City needs to be looking upwards rather than downwards. And after a really disappointing couple of games against West Brom and Millwall, it would have been nice to have seen us try and get on the front foot. But, you know, it's, it's difficult to grumble about a point. I think we do just keep coming back to the same conversation around David Wagner. I thought that the goal just highlighted the quality that we have in this side. It was a great run from Rowe. It was a lovely finish from Sargent. And I know we've been without those players at points this season, but it feels like there's so much talent just ready to be unearthed if we get the system right and the tactical setup right and the man management right and the in-game setup right. And it doesn't feel like we've got that under Wagner. This is more of a frustration thing for me. It feels like the, the talent and the quality is in that side if we can just unlock it. I mean, you look at the Southampton team, well drilled under Russell Martin. I think there'll be, you know, parts of their game that they would have been disappointed by today. But I don't think man for man across, particularly the attacking kind of lines, is is loads better than, than, than the Norwich side. It is marginally better, but not the kind of difference that we've seen in terms of points on the board so far this season. So question marks to be asked once more, but a a, a pleasing point. I'm not going to grumble too much about it. I've already had my say on on, on where I stand with things. It's now up to Ben Napper and the board at Norwich City to to look at things and, and see if they're willing to persist until the end of the season. I suspect their argument would be, well, let's see this season out and then find a long term replacement in the summer. But by doing that, you're essentially writing off this season and then you're going into a summer where you're going to be losing Sarah, Rowe, maybe Sergeant, maybe Gunn. A rebuild is then required in a division that's probably going to be stronger next year. So it's up to them. I would love to see us give it a real go, change head coach, maybe make some reinforcements in January uh, and see where we're at because kind of giving up on this season feels like an almighty waste. Um, it's Bristol Rovers next Saturday. We'll have a podcast coming on later on this week. Um, lots of competitions also running on the Talk North City socials. So if you haven't already uh, followed us on Twitter and Instagram and the various social medias, then do so. Let me know what you thought of today's game down in the comments section below and I'll catch you all very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>